This video is brought to you by Skillshare. It is fair to say that inverse kinematics and forward kinematics actually changed through the animation forever, especially inverse kinematics, because it revolutionized the way animators approach character movement, making the process both efficient and realistic. These animation terms are so common nowadays to the extent that you and I take them for granted, but they actually have an interesting story behind them, especially inverse kinematics. You see, in the early days of 3D animation, Animators primarily relied on FK, which required them to manually position each bone in the character's rig, starting from the parent bone, like the shoulder, down to the child bones, like the elbow and the wrist. But you might say this is obvious, which is true. But while this system gave precise control over the movement of individual joints, it became a laborious and time-consuming process especially for animations that required complex and coordinated movement like walking, reaching, or interacting with objects in a seam. Every joint in a chain had to be adjusted by hand, making the natural motion difficult to achieve. This means that the process was absolutely manual in other words. So IK or inverse kinematics fundamentally changed this workflow by allowing animators to manipulate the end position of a limb, such as a hand or a foot by letting the software calculate the necessary rotations of all joints involved. This means that instead of painstakingly position each bone, the animator could simply place the hand or foot where it needed to be, and the IK would ensure that the rest of the arm or leg moved naturally and followed accordingly. And here is the interesting thing. Back in the day, this was a game changer, particularly for actions like walking, grabbing objects or balancing, where it is crucial for parts of the body I mean the character's body to remain fixed while the rest moves. Again, this might seem simple and obvious, but I would say it would be a hellish process to animate without IK if you dare to try it. For example, if a character's hand needs to stay in place on the surface while the body moves, IK ensures that the hand remains anchored, something that was difficult to achieve with FK alone. But here's the thing. The introduction of inverse kinematics didn't make forward kinematics obsolete. Instead, both systems are used together, with FK being ideal for sweeping, rotational motions like swinging a sword, and IK being better for grounded or contact-based movements like walking or picking something up. And animators often switch between the two systems depending on the needs of the scene, which provides immense flexibility. So, this combination of FK and IK gives animators the best of both worlds, which is precise control over individual movements and efficiency in handling complex interconnected motions. Talking about movies, I love the new Dune movies, which I can't get enough of. I actually watched them multiple times, and a lot of scenes in the movies were stunning, but also kind of basic. And throughout that, I was thinking, can I make that in Blender easily? And to my surprise, Darren created an amazing class called Master Class for Beginners, where he recreated three shots from the movie. All of them were about the arrival at the Rackus sequence. The shots look simple, yet very cinematic. You can grab Darren's class on Skillshare. And if you don't know what Skillshare is, then you are probably living under a rock. The biggest online learning platform with hundreds of classes in every category, like VFX, illustration, modeling, painting, and so on, and everything else in between. Darren already released the second and the third part, I mean of his class, so you can follow along or pick a different class. The first 500 people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, which you can use to follow this class or any other class that you want. So click the link in the description and start learning right now. Now back to the video. FK is kind of simple and self-explanatory, but if you want to know more about inverse kinematics, the origins of IK trace back to the use of robotics during the mid-20th century. You see, in robotics, IK was developed as a mathematical solution for controlling robot arms, ensuring they could reach specific points in space while maintaining joints constraints. And that was a real problem that needed a smart and urgent solution, so it was solved using math. One of the earliest influential figures in the development of IK was Dinavit Hartenberg, 
who in 1955 proposed a matrix-based method for modeling the position and orientation of robot manipulators. And this became a key theory for calculating the positions of robotic joints based on the desired and effort position, like the hand or a tool at the end of a robot's arm. But it did not stop there because throughout the 1960s and 70s, researchers and engineers further refined these mathematical models for robot systems, seeking ways to make robots move more efficiently and predictably as you can imagine, since this meant faster production, which means more money, so they had a strong incentive right there. And here is the kicker. As IK grew in the field of robotics, it began to migrate into the world of computer graphics and animation. In the 1980s, three animators and engineers recognized that the same mathematical principles which were used to control robotic limbs could also be applied to animated characters, allowing animators to control a character's limb by specifying the position of the hands and feet, with the software calculating the necessary joint positions. One of the most notable applications of IK in computer graphics came from Alias Research, the company that developed Maya which is one of the mostly used and recognized 3D animation programs even back then. And I'm sure that the OG 3D artists remember these days of Alias. So in the early 1990s, Alias integrated IK into its animation software, making it far easier for animators to create realistic movements by automating the complex calculations involved in animated limbs. And the transition from robotics to animation was a collaborative effort between engineers, animators, and software developers. The application of IK in animation transformed how artists approach character movement, which in a nutshell streamlined the process and made it much more easier and natural, which is of course needed to create fluid animations. And as you can expect, this technology was later refined in 3D software, eventually to become a very important part of any video game, animation, or VFX project. You are a, toy! a significant milestone in the history of 3D animation was Pixar's Toy Story in 1995, which was the first fully computer-generated feature film that demonstrated how inverse kinematics can be used to create fluid and realistic character animations. And prior to this, as you can imagine, forward kinematics was the dominant technique, requiring animators to manually adjust each joint of the character's skeleton for every frame, which was labor-intensive and often led to stiff and unnatural movements. But the IK revolutionized this by allowing the animator to position a character's extremities, like hands or feet, while the software automatically calculates how the rest of the joints should move to achieve that position which now we take for granted. Now, let's take a look at some practical examples. Still with Toy Story, IK was particularly important for animating characters like Woody and Buzz Lightyear. For example, when Woody had to walk or interact with objects in the environment, IK made it easier to ensure that his feet would stay planted, I mean planted firmly on the ground, while the upper body moved, which created a much more natural and believable motion. And without IK, this would have required careful frame-by-frame -frame adjustment of each joint in Woody's legs, from the hips to the ankles, and they will have to do this to maintain contact with the ground. But IK simplified this process, allowing animators to focus more on the expressive aspect of the character's performance rather than the technical details of joint movements. And even though inverse kinematics was a significant advancement, FK or forward kinematics still plays a large role in the animation process as I said before. For movements when characters needed smooth rotational motions, like Woody swinging his arm, using FK was more suitable because it gave animators direct control over each joint's rotation in the sequence. And as a result, I think Toy Story became an important case, I mean case study, in combining FK and IK to optimize both control and fluidity in character animation in the first time in a big project. And as you can imagine, later on there was a widespread adoption of IK in software like Maya, 3D Studio Max, and Softimage during the 90s, and it became a game changer in the animation industry. 
By the late 1990s and the early 2000s, IK was standard in nearly all major 3D animation software, transforming character animation workflows from primitive to something that allows, I would say, more automation. This development enabled animators to create more sophisticated and lifelike characters, both in movies and video games alike, and most importantly, allowing for a greater realism and more intricate character interactions with their environments. On a side note, advanced animation techniques like motion capture actually benefit from these pioneering systems that were developed back in the 90s simply because they offer great results. And there you have it guys. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.